So welcome to the November Pixel Update Bulletin for 2025. Off the back of a pretty sizable and unexpected pixel drop, there are some fixes that we absolutely need to discuss as we do every month. So yeah, let's get into it. Here we go. Before we really get into the nitty gritty of what's changed, what's fixed and what you can do with your phone, I have a quick favour to ask first. Can you hit that subscribe button? It really helps me out more than you know. Cheers for that. You're part of a growing community once you do. Now, while this update contains the major feature drop that everyone is talking about, there are some fundamental fixes within this update that I think are arguably more important for the daily running of your phone. Well, maybe not that important, but they are important nonetheless. Sometimes those boring fixes are probably the best ones. And one of those is game breaking for a lot of us who have having Wi-Fi issues, but I'll get into that in just a second. They make the experience better everyone, which is why we talk about them every single month. First and foremost, the most widespread improvement hits every single device in this comprehensive Pixel lineup, so Pixel 6 all the way through to the Pixel 10. That includes general improvements to the charging and battery usage of your device. If you've got an older phone, I think this might make a big difference. This is something is Google, yeah, they seem to always tinker with this. It's good to see them address it once again for the entire supported range. Beyond power, every device has also seen a fix for instability and intermittent problems with emergency calling under certain conditions. As always, they you preface this by saying certain conditions. You tell me what that means. You don't need me to tell you though that emergency calls are literally life or death situations. So the fact that this was an instability here is worrying in its own right, but it's good that Google's come to a Swiss solution for every supported model. Similarly, a fix for apps not loading at some times has been addressed for all of the devices under the framework section, which hopefully should resolve any sort of weird moments you have where apps hang or they don't load quickly for no discernible reason. Diving into device specific features though, the audio section hits the Pixel 8 and newer. This includes the 8 right through to the Pixel 9 series and the Pixel 10, which received oh, issues with occasional system instability and performance slowdowns when using certain audio applications. I think this is great news, especially if you use your phone for gaming or heavy media consumption as audio delays and performance slowdowns are really totally immersion killers there. I haven't seen this on any of the devices I've been testing, but yeah, it's nice to see that one fixed. There's a more critical fix for the Pixel 9 10 series cameras as there is a fix here for certain photos taken with the ultra wide and telephoto lenses. Sometimes they can, these can exhibit a rainbow or color pattern in specific scenarios. I think that is a really huge deal, especially when you consider that the Pixel brand's core strength is its camera output and they're sold on as such. So it's nice to see that get fixed. Finally, under the telephony and framework banner, a fix for webcam mode is or not working properly when using webcam mode for connected devices is also included for every supported device, which should please those who use their phone as a high quality webcam, especially for calls directly from your PC. Not that I use that very often, I should use this a bit more, but I and a few others have had some annoying Wi-Fi issues. I don't think this is properly listed in the patches here, but this was with the previous October patch. So, so far I'm hopeful that things have improved and Wi-Fi is a little bit more stable. I'm not getting random disconnects. It seems to be working a lot better with this update so far. I mean, seamless Wi-Fi is, is, is a basic requirement for any smartphone and now that it's fixed or at least to be fixed from what, what I can see, it's a big win for everything, including battery improvements as well. So yeah, let's hopefully that that is, if you have any problems, let me know down in the comment sections below because it is one of those fixes that I don't think is technically listed but it does seem to be, or at least appear to be resolved here as well. The patch doesn't technically stop there though, as the November Play Services update also includes some wider fixes for all phones out there. We're getting two separate service updates this month, although they've been encompassed into one, which is a little bit unusual, but here's a highlight reel of what's new across both of them. The biggest addition here has to be the integrated live video experience for emergency calls on your phone. So that should mean that you should be able to start a live video feed right from first responders directly to the call itself. That's a huge step for safety, so well done on Google for that one. On the family control front, parental controls are getting better, making it easier for you to manage your kids' contacts or school time features for clearer supervision. And for the Play Store, where well, you can finally manage and uninstall apps right from the store listing itself, which should make cleaning up your device that little bit more easier. Under the hood, the focus is squarely on stability and payments across your entire ecosystem, from your phone, your TV, to your car. Security is getting a nice little boost here as well. The Android Auto Fill supports at least safely stronger storing, sorry, of quickly and then quickly retrieving of those annoying credit card CVV numbers for easier and quicker checkouts. We also saw system stability improvements rolled, across, rolled out across all platforms because, hey, nobody likes a janky experience and that's something Google needs to keep working on. Speaking of payments, Pix is now available for Gboard users in wallet, although QR codes or cards QR feature is now sadly done for our friends in Brazil regions. But developers are getting some attention with this update as well, with new tools for the support for maps, 
There's a lot more features that they can integrate as a result of this. And the core services for Android TV are also getting a quick update with the November Play System update. To check for this on your phone, just go to the Play System update section within the software update screen, tap that system option a few times, and it should take care of things from there. If you haven't already downloaded this entire OTA, then why not? Because fixes aside, it's a veritable feast for pixel owners. And you might've seen this video first and not our deep dive into that. We're getting the first ever device theme support with some Wicked partnerships, which is not Wicked partnerships, but the movie Wicked. AI notification summaries are here. There's scam detection coming to more countries, as is call notes. Google Maps is getting a power sharing mode on, or power saving mode, sorry, on Pixel 10. Google Messages is getting Nano Banana remix controls for your photos, so you can ch chop and change as you send them. And personalized edits are coming to Google Photos. What's more, Magic Q is now going to be able to use some cloud power to get better suggestions for you. And we glossed over this a little bit in our deep dive because it technically was added last minute before we're aware of it. But now your Pixel 10 is able to use cloud Gemini models for more timely suggestions and Pixel Recorder for expanding transcription summaries into more languages. Probably needed as it meant that Magic Q is gonna get better at surfacing things on your phone as it was one of our biggest complaints. And lots of people online have complained about that access for Magic Q. It doesn't work everywhere like you'd expect it to. But that's not all, as expansions do not stop there, as we didn't talk about this in our previous video. The journal application, the Pixel journal application, is now coming to the Pixel 8 and Pixel 9 series. Really good news, we're getting another really cool application for you there. Device health support is rolling out for the Pixel 6 and later, which is another great option if you're gonna keep hold of your phone for a long period of time. Magnifier app support is gonna be available for the Pixel Folds series of devices if I can even say that, which means, yeah, you can zoom in a little bit better and get a better view, especially if you've got a bigger screen. And the MyPixel app is rolling out now to Canada, France, Germany, India, Italy, and Spain, which is really good news as you can track all of your device purchases, all that kind of jazz, and that envelops a Pixel Tip app within it. And finally, Pixel Recorder summarization is now available in new languages, although I will leave a note to that down in the description below for you to find that. There's a lot more of options there for you. It's a really lot of, well, it's a lot of less, I'm not gonna say a lot of less useful because they are useful, really less flashy as it were, expansion to older devices, which we love to see Google do that. I wanna see more manufacturers do this. New markets, all of those important platform tech reach that we want, and it's just great for overall Android health. It doesn't stop there though, as this OTA is rolling out based upon Android QPR 1. So that means that a lot of you who weren't realizing it is an early feature drop, it does technically mean in December we'll get even more functionality as per that QPR2 beta track, which is rolling out beta 3.3 right now as we speak. We are basically having our cake and eating it right now, to put it lightly, with Pixel devices and Android. We just more, 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 all that. Just give me these Pixel updates. I think it is a really good time to be a Pixel owner, and it's only going to get better in a few weeks when that next OTA arrives with lots of new features, functions, and everything good under the hood. Anyway, enough from me. I've waffled on far too long in this video. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this, well, belated Pixel update bulletin. I think this is a really huge out of cycle update and tell me what you think of it down in the comment sections below. Are you more excited for the underlying bug fixes or for the new Gemini Nano features and those extra features thrown in? Until next time though, let me know what you think and I'll speak to you later.